Hello everyone. In this video I'd like to talk about polyphonic aftertouch and MPE on the Behringer UBXA. I didn't include these topics in the walkthrough video I made before, because I think it deserves its own video. You can find the overview and the walkthrough video on my channel as well. So, uh, what is polyphonic aftertouch? And how can it be used with the UBXA? Um, the keyboard of the UBXA can send polyphonic aftertouch or channel pressure. You can use both for the patches on the keyboard and for external stuff as well. Both can be assigned to a sound parameter via the modulation matrix. If you use the shift and four, then you can assign it here. Um, yeah, okay. Let's go back here. Uh, here's an example. Channel pressure means that if a chord or multiple notes are played on the keyboard, and you press down a key while the notes are held, it will generate the same value for all of the voices. For instance, if it's assigned to open the filter frequency, like here, um, all voices will get brighter, but all together by the same amount. So here is channel pressure amount, and if I play um, multiple notes, and now press one key, Regardless of which key I press, all notes will get the same amount of filter frequency. Um, polyphonic aftertouch um, generates a value per key, so only the keys which are pressed harder on the keyboard will open the filter of the single voice. It's a different level of expression you can use. Um, and let me show what I mean. So, the same notes, and now I press the single key. The polyphonic aftertouch on the UBXA plays quite well, and um, there is a little bit of travel, um, like maybe a few millimeters if you touch the keys, like so. And uh, yeah, it plays fine, and you can adjust uh, the sensitivity. I'll come to that later. Yeah, so it can be used for sounds on the UBXA itself but it's also transmitted on the USB and media output, so you can play other synthesizers or plugins on your computer with it, um, as long as those are supporting polyphonic aftertouch as well. Um, to set it up, you need to go into the menu Velocity Aftertouch to make the settings there. Um, so, Shift and Button 2, and you get into this menu. And then you need to scroll um, to the Aftertouch Out, which is entry number four. Then you press select, and now the keyboard is set to poly aftertouch, but you can send it to channel pressure. So if um, your other equipment doesn't support poly aftertouch, you need to set it here, otherwise um, it won't work uh, together. Yeah, so let's leave it on poly. And um, also you can, um, yeah, you can set the sensitivity of the polyphonic aftertouch also here in these menus. Like uh, entry number five is the um, aftertouch curve. So mine is set to hard, but you can set it to soft or medium. Yeah, there's a subtle difference. So the difference is not really, um, really big, but yeah, you can just adjust it a bit to your playing. Um, and also, if you go back, um, there's this aftertouch filter. This is not for assigning the aftertouch to the filter. You do that in the in the mod um, matrix. But um, this is more, yeah, it's hard to describe. For me, it sounds like a like a glide um, on the aftertouch value. Uh, let me show you what I mean. If I go into it, now it's set to 100, like this is my favorite setting. Um, but if you set it to very small amounts, it will react very immediate. Um, and it's really steppy. Like, yeah, just for the purpose of showing, 
I set it to zero. So, like so. Yeah, you can really hear this, um, these glitching noises. Um, if I set it higher, it will be smoother. And um, really high values, like, I don't know, 120 or something, um, you can hear... It's, it's almost like a curve, like a attack and release, which will be applied to the aftertouch. We set it really high. So my favorite setting is around 100 and yeah, as I said, you can just set it to your liking um, and I guess it's flexible enough to, to fit your playing style. Um, yeah, so this is Palo Polyphonic Aftertouch. Uh, next up, let's go to uh, yeah, MPE. Uh, what is MPE and what is, what's that about? Okay, so what is MPE? MPE is an abbreviation for uh, MIDI polyphonic expression and um, it's a bit more flexible than, yeah, than the usual MIDI pro protocol because it's sending on 15 channels. Um, so each note um, will be handled on, a, on an own MIDI channel and that gives uh, a bit more of expression. So. You, you have like pitch expression, uh, timbre expression for, for instance, you can open up the filter with that. And um, also there's a third one and you can um, assign it via the mod matrix. The UVXA can't send MPE, but it will receive. Um, and yeah, there are controllers for this, like um, Ableton Push 3 um, can send MPE data or the... Um, Osmos keyboard, um, what else? Yeah, there's this uh, instrument. Yeah, there, there are a few out there. And unfortunately, I don't have any of these, but um, I have Bitwig, and Bitwig can also send MPE data. And to set this up, uh, you need to activate it in the uh, UBXA. It's uh, in the USB MIDI um, menu, so you need to press Shift and 1. And then go into the MIDI settings and you can scroll back. There are the MP3 profiles, MP3 pitch settings, uh, MPE pitch settings. So in the profile, you can set it to disabled, to single or to zones. Um, single is if you're not in the split or double mode and zones is for the split and double modes. So I set it to single. Um, let's go back. And then I set the, um, the upper pitch, because this is also uh, for the single program. So if I go into it, I have set it to 96. Um, this is the, the pitch range for the MPE pitch data. Yeah, so everything is set up here. So we can go back. And now let's make the settings in um, Bitwig. And in Bitwig, um, I already have here, uh, yeah, some some notes uh, played in. And to set this up in Bitwig, we need to go into the um, MIDI device here. Um, you need to set up a hardware instrument, so it sends to the UBXA, and um, it uses MPE. You need to activate this. And then you need to set the pitch range here, and I set it already to 96, so that should work. And now, um, without any MPE data in it, let's just listen to the sequence that I programmed. Just a few chords 
And um, what we can do now, um, we can open up this little uh, pitchfork here. If we click on this, uh, we see these little lines here on the, um, on the notes. And with this, we can uh, glide from one note to another. Like, let's do that. Um, let's just uh, glide this chord to the other chord. Like from the A minor um, to the E minor. And also in the bass notes, let's go from the A up to the E. Um, okay. So now, now let's listen how this sounds now. You see, so it's not just a portamento because, um, yeah, you can really um, determine what goes up, what goes down, and um, even within a note, you can you can make a pitch uh, bending like. I don't know, if you go here from the E up to, let's say, um, what is it, this is an E, yeah, let's go to the G, and then back down again, and then it sounds like this. Yeah, pretty cool, and um, yeah, you can just go through and make all the bendings here. Um, you can determine the length of the bending, how long you want it, want it to be. Um, it's pretty flexible. And yeah, it's fun. And it sounds totally different than portamento or glide on the keyboard itself. Um, and I think that's pretty interesting. Okay, there are a few notes left. And you see it's interesting, like these notes are gliding just a semitone, and this one too, no, a half tone, and this one goes um, like a semitone. And uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, let's, let's, yeah, let's uh, have the bass notes here without a glide. Now listen how it sounds. Yeah, I think that's pretty nice. Um, maybe we can glide up to the A minor again. Okay, like this. Yeah, that's nice. Um, so what else? Um, if you open up this note expressions here, like clicking on this little symbol, um, then you see more parameters here. Um, there's a pressure parameter um, that's also good for MPE, MPE pressure. Then there's the MPC timbre or the timbre. And um, this is per note. So you can really pick out a note um, let's say this one, and on the uh, on the UBXA in the mod uh, yeah in the modulation matrix, um, I applied this one like MPE timbre to uh, the filter frequency, and um, with this with this one I can open up the filter per note. Like I can go into, let's say, this note here, I pick it out, the E3, and then I can just, um, yeah, put in some, some editings here and open up the filter only for the E. Let's listen to how that sounds. Yeah, that's pretty nice. And then the next E here, and close it slowly again. 
like this. And now I can, I don't know, pick out the A here and open the filter on the A. And also close it again. kind of glitch here whatever that is now um, yeah, I need to check maybe something's wrong in the settings um, but however I mean these are the possibilities you have um, with these expressions here and also as I said the pressure is also per note and the MPC uh, the MPE pressure you can also assign in the um, in the mod uh, yeah, in the in the modulation matrix, let's see where it is. MPE, there is it. MPE pitch band. Yeah, we have MPE timbre, MPE pitch band, and MPE pressure, and you could, can assign it to any parameter uh, in the mod matrix. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, it's a shame that I don't have a have an MPE controller, but. Um, yeah, I will for sure uh, have a look at it at one in the future. And for now, I'm having fun with um, this feature and Bitwig. Uh, yeah. Okay, I hope this tutorial was uh, useful for you. And um, see you next time. Thanks for watching.